Hi, everybody. This is Robert. And I'm Candace. And welcome to This Creeps Me Out. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm terrified, <laughs> but I think I'm ready. Are you? I'm excited for this week. I think this week is going to be very, very fun. Um, I know that this is like the number one thing that creeps you out. Yes. Right? So from here on, I'm going to be able to handle yeah, it. Yeah, it's all downhill for it's, you from here yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> this is or uphill, however you think about it. Or I don't know, is oh, it yeah. downhill? No, it would be uphill. I, Downhill's well, worse. Because, well, I fall this either why, way. See, this is why you're getting a PhD and I'm, I play video games. So. But you, you play them very well. I do. I'm good at something. And you sell the houses. Yes, I'm also, yes, because I am also a realtor. So, um, how, how was your week, Candace? Week was good. Um, I made some spooky dolls, which I'm working right now in a little Golden Girls series. Really? I am. Um, I've been since R.I.P. Betty White. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we lost Betty White. I have been uh, inspired to start watching the Golden Girls again, okay. as one does. Which one are you, really quick? I don't, I feel like I'm between like a Rose and a Dorothy. Okay. I have never you? actually watched the show enough. To <gasps> I know Rose is, is Rose B. Arthur? No, Rose is Betty White. Oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. See, and ironically, I feel like I'm a mix between You're B. Rose. Arthur and Rue. You are a little bit of a Blanche, like a Rue McClanahan. Yeah. But there are moments, like now, where you're Rose. Where you're just like, what? Oh, well, that, oh, that's true. I didn't realize that she was, oh, was she like the dumb one? Uh, yeah. Oh, then I'm Rose. Never mind. I'm the dumb one. <laughs> that's very, I'm a bad gay. I've never actually sat and watched Golden Girls. I, I, I really should. enjoyed it. I had to stop watching it last night because there was an episode where um, they had a chicken that they were training to play music, and then that chicken ended up being cooked. And I was like, <gasps> that's so sad. It was so sad. sad. So I had to stop and go to bed. Oh, <laughs> Chicken. I know, it was really sad. Yeah, forgive us. We're vegetarians, so we will be really obnoxious about anything animal related if you're not. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> but yeah, making spooky dolls. So yeah, I've made uh, Dorothy and I've made Blanche. Blanche oh, cool. has horns because she's horny. Yeah, these are not your tip. <laughs> that's. that's <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, but that, no, I, these dolls, we should probably, we should like share them to some capacity on Instagram or something. Although, are you going to put them on your Etsy shop? Um, these are going to just live with me. Um, you can see them on my Instagram at oh, okay. Halloween underscore lass. And I post all my little creations there. Um, but I will be making more horror dolls. I do make at least, there's always one in an Etsy shop, um, Nanja doll from what we do in the shadows, because yeah. that is like the I most helped you funny. Send one away you did. Recently, yeah. Um, that was my, it's, I think the funniest show to me on television. I love that show. I think it is so freaking good. I and love it so much. I think everyone needs a little Nanja doll in their home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you, uh, are you excited for our first episode? Excited for our first episode, but terrified for of the topic. What it's about. Oh, well, then, but you know, let's just jump right into it then. Let's get it over with. So, kids, today we are talking about, and I just stole that from Pissy Miles because I'm so used to doing a podcast with her. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Pissy, I'm not trying to step on your toes. Um, we are talking about aliens today, mm. which um, happens to be your favorite thing in the universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple panic attacks about aliens. Yeah. Really? Okay. So then let's just let's ask the question. Do you believe? Okay. If we break it down. Oh. <laughs> you clearly thought about this before. I, I was talking to my father about the other day because I was oh, like, really? as a logical person, right? Okay. We cannot be the only planet in the universe that has life on it. Agreed. I agree. 100%. So there must be something out there. I don't know if it's like little green men or if okay. it's like yeah. Mars attack or ET or <laughs> alien from aliens. Okay. Yeah. But like, I am so freaked out by it that it just kind of like shivers me timbers. Shivers your timbers. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I mean, uh, my sister is also deathly afraid. I know I've met, I've met plenty of people who are like really, really afraid of aliens. They don't freak me out so much. I do believe in them. Um, mainly because to me it would be like saying if you looked at the ocean and be like, do you think there's anything in there? And being like, no, clearly there's nothing. Like, yeah, there, there has yeah. to be something. Yeah, like it, there's too much space out there for it to just be us. That's such a egotistical way of looking at it, mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion. No, I agree. Um, but am I comfortable so, with the idea? No. No, I, I mean, I guess it like makes sense because you see films like Independence Day. Oh, the media like, has completely like... yeah made me fearful. I think I think what makes me fearful of it is that there's always the concept that because they're visiting us, it means they're just so much further 
than yes. us. It's not like Star Trek. Totally okay with that. Like, yeah. we're going out. We're developed. Look at us, yeah. Captain Kirk and Spock. It's like, we got yeah. this. Yeah. Whereas I feel like I would be fine with aliens more if they showed up and like, do you guys have stuff for our uh, for our ship? You know, like, like, like kind of just like stupid. <laughs> oh, and, like, you want like redneck aliens. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. See, with- no, to me, that would still be... I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's fair. <laughs> because then... There's the- reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I... I'm just, I, it's like all the movies, I think there were so many alien movies when we were growing up in the 90s and early really? 2000s. I just, oh, yeah, I mean, Independence Day I'm thinking like one. Independence Day, E.T., E.T., Alien, You're Alien. E.T., aren't I, you? I can't talk about E.T. I don't understand this. Okay. <laughs> He's a little munchkin who rides in a basket on a bike going, ouch. Like, I okay, so like when I was a kid. Um, I mean, the movie came out in 82, and I was... Wow, you know the year off the top of your head. I looked that up and remembered the oh, date. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> I thought you just knew this. No. You're like, it was 1982. I wasn't born yet. I wasn't born yet, but I knew something was wrong. But I knew. <laughs> and, and it was that movie, and it was E.T. <laughs> no, it was... I, I was shown it as a kid. I think I was, like, younger than eight, which, like, my parents were thinking, like... That's typical, yeah. Typical I cute little movie. I was, like, like, little, yeah. Um, when he got sick... Yeah. And then the kid Elliot got sick. I wasn't like, you know, afraid for them thinking like, oh no, E.T.'s going to die. I was like, let E.T. die. Good. This is how this movie should end. Yes. I was like, (laughs) he he turned that like really like sickly white color and he was like shriveled up and I was like, that is so scary looking. And I just, I started like screaming and crying. Really? Oh yeah. It made me sad. I didn't want E.T. to die. No, I was like, why didn't he die? (laughs) I don't quote me, but I actually think Drew Barrymore said that she was like deathly afraid of him. Yeah, I could, I, be, totally, I, mean, I could be making that up. Well, we'll have to ask that. Drew one day. Yeah, when we get we'll her just, on this. Yeah, podcast. we'll just have to ask Drew one day when we do the scream episode. Yeah, but <laughs> I it happened further. Like when we um were vacationing when I was younger, we went to Universal Studios. Yeah, and my parents thought it was a great idea to have me go on the ET ride, and. They knew. I was going to say, they must have known. Oh, they they knew that this was, like, a deathly evil fear of mine. And yeah. they're like, let's go on it. And, like, as a child, I was like, no, no, no. How about you go in with my younger brother, Phil, and I'll yeah. just wait outside. And they're not going to leave a child, though, outside of a ride in the middle of Universal Studios Florida. My mom did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. they're like, you have to come in. So we went in, and I cried the entire way in line. No. I was like, I can't do this. And they put me on that little bicycle that you're like, you know, pretending to ride with mm-hmm. E.T. and Elliot. And I'm just crying oh, the whole no. time. And when yeah. I see that ride closes, I'm like, good. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, terrifying. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. But I forgot that that was even a thing that they had that ride. And like, people love him. I think he's so cute. And he cares. And he has a little glowy finger. Good for him. I think he's adorable. No, I, I think it just, it scarred me so much as a child that I just never was okay with the concept of them, like, extraterrestrial life. Yeah, he just ruined aliens for you, which is so funny to me, considering, like, like when you think of, like, Independence Day or Alien, like, those aliens are, like, you know, really scary. They're, like, monsters. The kind, yeah, they kind of, I wouldn't want to run into, like, Predator. No, but, but I mean... But your big one started with E.T., the little... E.T. and then Mars Attack. The little medical care worker, E.T., you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's just that and, like, and the Mars Attack movies, too. That one, um... Mm-hmm. Like, I, I couldn't sleep... And, like, the same thing with E.T. Could not sleep for years, decades of my life because oh I'm just God. so scared. Do you uh, just, like, wake up and you're like, they're here. The aliens are oh, here. Oh, terrified of, like, looking out your window and then seeing, like, an alien on the lawn. Mm-hmm. And there was one incident that my father reminded me of because really? I think okay. I blocked it out. I didn't have, like, an extraterrestrial oh, experience. I was to ask him, no, like, I was not probed or, like, <laughs> <laughs> left on the top I was, of like, a roof somewhere. Me about the butt stuff that happened to you from the aliens. <laughs> No, it was, um, we were driving back from my grandma Riley's house when okay. I was a kid and we were coming back from like Hanukkah or Passover. I think it was like some Jewish holiday. Okay. And we're driving back on the highway and I see in the sky this giant thing and I'm like, really? okay. oh my damn. Oh my damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's a UFO. And we're keep going. I'm like, dad, dad, what? don't drive towards the UFO, because every movie is like you go the other way. Is it? Is that a thing? I don't know. I'm just like, don't go towards danger. I don't think I've ever seen a movie where they're like, don't go towards the UFO. Like everybody's like, what the fuck is that? And they drive straight at. Oh, see, for me, I'm just like, no, no, no. Let's always go the other direction to well, safety. That's fair. I, yeah. 
So we're we're going the way. I'm like crying. I'm like, and I'm probably like ten. I'm like, Dad, stop. That's like something in the sky. It looks like a mm-hmm. UFO. It has this weird blinking light. Let's please like let's Was it a tower? Please tell me it was a tower. It was a blimp. Uh- <laughs> Fifteen minutes, we're driving yeah. towards it. I'm having like a big panic attack in the back seat. I'm like, so don't go near the UFO. <laughs> and they're like, and my brother, who is younger than me, is like, yeah. Hannah's. It's a blimp. Oh I'm my like, god, was it a Goodyear blimp? Or was I it just like it a- could have been. I think it was like near this like local town in New Jersey. And your dad's like, don't worry, it's a weather balloon. <laughs> it was. <laughs> he still to this day was like, yeah, you had a, <laughs> you had a moment with that blimp. Oh my god, that is hilarious. Well, at least it wasn't a UFO. Well, I, I don't think, I don't think I would really survive. Now. <laughs> that's like what I was, I think that's my, my rationale for my fear of aliens. It's like, I don't think if there was like an evil alien, mm-hmm. a thing, I would survive it. I'd be the first person that would be like, beep, beep, zap, zapped by an alien. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how they attack? With their, beep, with beep, their, zap, zap. With their little guns. <laughs> Why does it beep, beep? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so they like do beep, beep, zap, zap with their little guns. <laughs> And why is the gun little? There's, they could be big aliens. They, I don't know what they're carrying. <laughs> I just imagine them like coming down with their big heads and their little guns. <laughs> their big heads and their little guns. <laughs> and, then, oh and then I feel like I'd be like, oh no, but I can't run fast. And then they'd get me. With their little guns. With their little guns and their big heads. Have you ever seen signs? Yeah, cried in the theater. Did you really? Yeah. I remember going to the theater with my dad and my brother. Yeah. And... I, this is when I started that I would wear sweatshirts with hoods to movies because then I would close the opening up. That's smart. Yeah. I would always yeah. pretend in horror movies to drop candy when something was scary. I was like, whoop, I have to find that. Oh, see, I would always floor. just yeah. be on the floor. Like now I like, I love horror movies and like supernatural yeah. throws, love them. But when to see signs, I was like, well, this is my worst nightmare. And why did he take me to see this in the theater? Knowing my deathly fear of aliens. Maybe he thought you would just get over it or it was like a, fi- a good family f- like a good one. family film? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, my words. It's just... like this movie. Yes, a good family film where like this yeah. alien attack. Like when that alien walks through like the party scene. That is one of the scariest moments Ooh. in cinema in my opinion. It, mm-mm. And like it's got long hands with long yeah. fingers. Does it, I feel like it looks pretty humanoid. It's just like a weird But the proportions are weird. Yeah, I mean they are a little weird, yeah. It's just, it's unsettling and I think that's. I mean, plus it's an alien encounter. But those dumb aliens come to a planet that's mostly water. <laughs> right? Like, that that part... Well, I mean, if you go back and watch Spoilers. the movie, there's a ton uh, of whatever. It's from, like, the, the early 2000s. If you haven't seen it at this point, that's not my fault. Um, but, like, that when you go back and watch that movie, there's, like, so many, like, weird loopholes in there that you're like, okay. But... Um, so then you don't have any, like, actual alien encounters or ufo experiences aside from your blimp story besides the blimp no and that was my main encounter with a blimp yeah ever ever (laughs) you ever seen a blimp since i think i've always done one like that could be a ufo (laughs) just creative right they're just uh disguising themselves i don't have any either and i don't know anybody who has like a ufo that's a good thing although no a year ago we went to uh for like to that week between christmas and new year's we went to the outer banks and we went with Jess, who is deathly afraid. Yeah. And apparently, like a like a few days after we left, a whole bunch of people right where we were saw like a UFO over the ocean or something. Was it a blimp? No, I don't think it was. I don't know the I don't know the ins and out of it. I could be really wrong, but um, I know that there was like a big thing of them seeing a UFO and Jess. And it was funny because when we mm-hmm. were there one night, Kevin did say he thought he saw something weird, like in the sky over the ocean. But Mm-mm. I mean. I mean- that would terrify me because it's also like it's over the ocean, like it's checking things out. It wants to see its whale brethren. It's I don't know. Whale. You think whales are? Um... I don't know. I mean, I love a good whale. Do you know people? A lot of people think octopuses are aliens. I did not know that because but I love really an octopus. Smart. They make no sense. Apparently, they have like really weird DNA or something. Like what that. What do you mean they make no sense? Like the fact that like if you put an octopus like on a ship. It can be like a big fucking octopus. They can go through a tiny hole. Yeah, they can go through a tiny hole and get away. Why does that and, make no sense? Because it doesn't make sense. Okay. I just mean like they they they're like weird. They're like stand out within like the biology. It's all the, of the cele- ocean. Uh, cephalopod. That's just part of that whole DNA thing. 
I don't, I don't. Look, I think they're the most beautiful I, little creatures. They are very cute. I just mean like, but and they're very, I call very them smart. little pusses. Little pusses. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I just, I think they're so cute. But yeah, I understand why the association could be made between an octopus and an alien because head shape and intelligence. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're really, they're apparently really, really, really smart. But the one thing that really pisses me off is how aliens made the pyramids. Why does that annoy you? As an art historian and like knowing kind of like the historical context of like the building of the pyramids and all of okay. the ins and outs and just like, that is such a bullshit theory. Is it? It's just to I me. I don't really know enough. I mean, I, I feel like especially like if I let my hair get long and my beard get longer, I could look like that guy who's like, aliens <laughs> but um i don't know i mean i don't know enough about it to say one way or the other but i always thought it was interesting like in the sense like in terms of technology like who knows maybe we were visited and they gave us a little bit of a push i yes possibly like a push like or yeah. i don't know something like they they probed a human and then it was like i know how to build pyramids now <laughs> that's one of the side effects of butt stuff yeah. is um, pyramid Pyramid building. <laughs> like, we're going to check out your ass. And he's like, I know how to build a pyramid. That's scientific. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is that is um, scientifically proven. But like when I rewatched for this episode, the fourth kind movie last night. Oh, okay. um, that movie scares the shit out of me. But okay, while I was watching it, I was also like on my phone on Wikipedia looking up the doctor. Like Dr. Yeah. Abigail something. Yeah, whatever. And th- I did not know when I saw this movie the first two times. This is my third time watching it. That... The whole thing was, like, a planned hoax by Universal. I can't believe you didn't know that. That's how scared I am of aliens. I just completely bought into this was all documentary footage. I thought it was really well done. The, Fantastic The documentary, movie. like, aspect of it, perspective, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, the, I still, to this day, can't see a white owl and not think that there's an alien watching me. It was a great story. Like, the acting was wonderful. I love, I mean, I truly believe that Alaska is probably where all the hauntings of the aliens are. I mean, it would make sense that that would be, like, the type of place you'd see them a lot. Although, to be fair, the encounters that and stuff like that that I printed for today, I didn't print any from Alaska. Well, that ruins my comfort level thinking that they're all far away in Alaska. Did you know there was a super big hoax in Morristown? Like, 20 minutes from where we are right yeah, now? Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. I did not know that. I, I, I got so excited. I saw it on, um, cause I did a lot of very, um, deep research today on Wikipedia and, um, <laughs> <laughs> including just going to one Wikipedia page that is literally a list of chronological, um, <laughs> sightings of UFOs to find different things to print. Um, Wikipedia is always a great starting place. It is. And in my case, also a finisher. <laughs> um, um, but I did see one that was like in, and it was like not that long ago. No. But, but it was a hoax. It was a hoax. Okay. Some people came forward and they said it was like a special experiment to, uh, I just, so I didn't really read up about it or anything like that. But I, th- I got so excited when I saw it. I was like, okay, oh, this is going to shit her pants. I can't wait to tell That would have been a very big nope for me. I should have just printed it, told you about it and not told you it was a hoax. I, I would have not slept. <laughs> I like, know. I mm-mm. couldn't do it. I'm not that cruel. I promise. Um, but then, so then do you want to learn about some UFO encounters? I don't, but I'll listen. So, <laughs> so if you are the type of person out there who loves UFOs and aliens and is expecting me to talk about all the big ones, I might accidentally talk about a big one, but I just printed out ones that I thought looked kind of funny or fun or that fit a certain thing because we only have an hour. So um, do you want to learn about the Travis Walton UFO incident? Of course. Okay. So this happened November 5th, 1975. And I'm just going to read from the paper. Okay. Because <laughs> I did not memorize it. Forgive Wait, me, I learned about this. What location just... is it? And what state? This one is, I think it's Arizona. Yeah, it's Heber, Arizona. Okay, far enough away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, works, he worked as like a, a forestry worker in the, oh my God, I can't say this, Apache Sit Greaves National Forests near Snowflake, Arizona. Okay, we so, apologize and, for any mispronunciation that which will, will, of course, happen. Which, if you've ever heard me read anything, yeah, exactly, it will, it will happen, so forgive me. He wrote a book about this, so I think, more than likely, if this is a hoax, he's just a genius who made a shit ton of money. Good for I, him. And I'm, I'm, spoiler alert to all of you, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go see a bunch of UFOs after this and write a book. Because <laughs> I would like to never work again. So, 
Um, so <laughs> his abduction claims are, according to Walt, uh, Walton and a number of other members from the logging crew, on November 5th, 1975, he was working with a timber stand improvement crew in the Apache Stick Greaves National Forest near Snowflake, Arizona. That is a sentence. Forgive me. Snowflake. Well, right? <laughs> Isn't that ironic? That's in a place in Arizona now. Gonna... Um, while riding in a truck with six of his co-workers, they allegedly encountered a saucer-shaped object hovering over the ground approximately 110 feet away, making a high-pitched buzz. Walton claims that after he left the truck and approached the object, a beam of light suddenly appeared from the craft and knocked him unconscious. The other six men were frightened and supposedly drove away. <laughs> How do you supposedly <laughs> drive away? That is the most bullshit way of saying, yeah, we left him we for dead. We abandoned <laughs> our friend. <laughs> Good luck, Walt. Have fun. <laughs> oh, Travis, that's his actual name. Um, Walton claims that he awoke in a hospital-like room being observed by three short, bald creatures, a.k.a. me coming and jumping. <laughs> Am I sitting with an alien right now? I'm sorry, Anna. This is my coming out. (laughs) For those of you who don't know, me, Joe, and Kip, that's my two brothers. Obviously, me is me. But, um... (laughs) Um... He claims that he fought with them until a human wearing a helmet led Walton to another room where he blacked out as three other humans put a clear plastic mask over his face. This could also... So this could also be just from 2020. (laughs) And Travis Travis is an (laughs) anti-vaxxer. Wait, also, like, that means the um, humans are working with the aliens in this I, story? I think in this case, the helmet's supposed to make us realize that these are people who've been abducted and, like, put into some weird servitude. Okay. Um, I, I don't really know. Walton has claims he remembers nothing else until he found himself walking along a highway five days later. Um, which, in my mind, clearly means a lot of butt stuff happened and it's the 17th, <laughs> I want to talk about it. And with the flying saucer <laughs> departing above him. So there is obviously. Wait, so hang on. The flying ahead. saucer was departing above him five days after, like when he was kind yeah, of like he was, walk, he, he was walking along the highway, and when he starts, that's the, that's when he starts his memory again as he sees the saucer leaving. Uh, and, um, okay. you know, oh, but it's five, five days after he just, yeah, okay, and he's cool. just on the highway. So, in the following days, Walton's UFO claim. Um, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't read that correctly in the days following his claim <laughs> the national Enquirer awarded him a five thousand dollar prize for the best ufo case of the year after he passed a polygraph test administered by the Enquirer, which means absolutely nothing yeah <laughs> but um i didn't even know that was a thing i was like i could have submitted this blimp story yeah I, well i mean right i i mean i hope they're still doing it because i could use five grand like That'd be i great. don't know i'm not a pathological liar or anything but i feel like I could so pass this five. was november 5th 1975 yeah, and, and like I said, he wrote a book, and the book was actually, it was called The Walton Experience, and it was adapted in 1993 into the film Fire in the Sky. That sounds familiar. I haven't seen it. It but... does. I've never seen it either, and I feel like I've talked about it before, but I don't remember very much about it. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, and then, of course, there's like a bunch of skeptics, of course, and, you know, they probably blame like weather balloons or something. Um, I mean, it could also just be that the dude needed money, and he wrote a... A uh, book. Like, <laughs> but like, but his story, yeah. basically, is that he was with some guys. Um, other, other co-workers. Other co-workers. Yeah. Who then supposedly abandoned him. Yes. Because something, he got knocked Which out of a car by a beam. favorite thing ever. They supposedly drove away. I hope you never supposedly drive away from me when oh, I'm having an alien right attack. Now, can, if you are, like, behind enemy lines, I am supposedly driving away. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You're done, girl. I'll throw water at him and give it one shot. I don't know. <laughs> But then I am gone. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that's, it's an interesting story, but it seems pretty basic. But I don't like the whole, I mean, I do, but I don't like the whole, like, humans are now, like, working with the aliens or working for the aliens. I mean, it makes sense because there are some people who disappear and then, like, don't return. So, like, the concept, I mean, you know. But are they, like, brainwashed? Like, are they, like, lobotomized humans being forced to then continue the abductions. I mean, listen, I know you're trying to break me and find out my alien. Um, I'm trying side, to. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> I just know there was a black helmet. That's all. That's okay. all Travis talked about. That's all it got. Mm. So I happened to see also this and I was like, well, fuck, I have to print the fact that one of the former presidents has a UFO incident. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so Jimmy Carter. Um, Good guy. 
Yeah, he was the president from 1977 until 1981, and he reported seeing an unidentified flying object while in Leary, Georgia in 1969. He was... Um, still far enough away from here. Yeah, <laughs> still good. We're still good. Yeah. I don't think any of these are in Jersey, which really upset me, because I really wanted one in Jersey. Okay, even if it's, like, our part of the East Coast, mm-hmm. not going to feel comfortable. Oh, well, I have something to tell you about, Esther. Oh. I'd go to these, because okay. um, there's a really famous one not too far from here. Um but uh and it's so, my blimp jewish holiday story <laughs> <you're right. laughs> there was this girl she was dead um so basically he was giving like a speech or something um at a lions club meeting when he was and it was two years before he became the governor of georgia okay so he's not really like that super well known i guess as a figure at this point um but basically this is what this is what he said. So, well, for, Carter felt oh, okay. Forgive me. Let me let me try that again. <laughs> so, so for about like twelve minutes, he saw a light in the sky that like changed colors and like was acting weird and like that kind of. Was thing. he on acid? No, he was giving a speech at the lions. Club. <laughs> <laughs> was he on acid? I mean, it's like, I mean it's nineteen sixty nine. Maybe let's see what happens. I don't. I wouldn't blame him. Um, but what's important is that in his report, um, it's supposed to be that it was witnessed by like 10 to 12 people, that kind of fun okay. stuff. Okay. So in 1973, he said, there were about 20 of us standing outside a little restaurant, I believe, a high school a high school lunchroom. Sorry, that's such a weird sentence. I, I can't read. Wikipedia is not known for its, yep. you know, well-worded content yeah, all the and time. I'm not known for putting words together well ever. That so. is true. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> And a kind of green light appeared in the western sky. Okay. This was right after sundown. It got brighter and brighter, and then it eventually disappeared. It didn't have any solid substance to it. It was just a a very peculiar looking light. None of us um, could understand what it was. Later, in a 2005 interview, he said, All of a sudden, one of the men looked up and said, look over in the west, and there was a bright light in the sky. We all saw it, and then the light, it got closer and closer to us, and then it stopped. I don't know how far away, but it stopped beyond the pine trees, and all of a sudden, it changed color to blue, and then it changed to red, then black to white. We were trying to figure out what in the world it could be, and then it receded into the distance. Hmm. So that's the whole, that's the whole experience that we saw the light. Saw the thing in the light, not even like a spaceship. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. He, it was literally just the light. Apparently, um, some they like reached out to other people, and other people like didn't remember it or didn't think it was like that big of a deal. Hmm. Um, and then like so, you know, I mean, obviously, when ever anybody sees a UFO, everybody works really hard to you know debunk it. So yeah. <laughs> but the one thing I did write down because I do think that this would be fucking hilarious is: could you imagine if Trump claimed he saw UFO? <laughs> Um, I thought it was big, it was huge, it was the bigliest... Uh, the bigliest! The bigliest UFO ever. It had the bigliest aliens. The greatest, the greatest of aliens. I know them really well. They're really nice guys. <laughs> they, <laughs> big heads, small heads, tiny hands. Orange, blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> I would... I mean, I know he had, like, the whole space defense thing. I would love... Love, love, love <laughs> more than anything in the world a documentary of Donald Trump talking about aliens. I would love to hear his thoughts. Him talking about it or somebody then like using footage of him to say that he's an alien? I don't think he's smart enough to be an alien. Do you believe that that man could crap You just ship and talked fly? about like a redneck alien theory? Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, but my point was that it could never happen because they would never, they'd never be smart enough to fly here. <laughs> I don't know. What if their version of like a redneck alien is still so much more intelligent than the smartest human? The only way it could be possible is in the same sense that like, you know, like with how all of us like, I can't build a car. I don't know how to like make it do what it does. But if you give me the key, (laughs) (laughs) if you give me the key, I can drive that thing. So like. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, if there's like, you know, an alien mechanic. This This would be a great fucking movie. What, like the stupid alien? Yeah, or just the, like your regular average alien who comes to Earth because, you know, he, did, he didn't build this ship. He just, you know, he bought one out of dealership. I feel like they kind of like do that with like Roger from American Dad. That's fair. Yeah, and I he's, love Roger. Okay, he's the my top alien. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with him. The one alien you like. That I'm Even like, we could be. A pathological liar and a murderer and all those other fun stuff about aliens. That to me that is you like, love. you know what? I, I understand you. <laughs> I understand you. <laughs> 
We're speaking the same language. Same language. I do do really, really love he's, Roger. He's a funny guy. He is funny. I wouldn't mind if all the aliens that came to Earth were Roger. Were like Roger. I think we as a people would be destroyed very quickly out of some something happening by Roger. <laughs> Probably. Absolutely. <laughs> Are you ready for the next one? Is the next one scary? No, I don't think so. More than Jimmy's ball of light? It's, I mean, it's the same kind of premise. The reason I, pull, I pulled this one is because it's like a very big group sighting. Oh, um, that's not good. Yeah, so it, um, I pulled it, it's the Phoenix Lights, which apparently this is a really big one. So this is another one in Arizona. It is in Arizona. Okay. But it, well, it's Arizona, shit, I, I underline, Arizona, Nevada, and then also the Mexican state of Sonora? Okay, so it's three regions saw this. Yeah, but it's like all that same area of the yeah. world. Yeah, okay. Um, and it was March 13th, 1997. That's not too far. Well, it is far away because yeah. we are now in, in our the tw- minds. I'm still For 18. me, I'm just yeah. like, <laughs> that was a few years ago. No, that, was, that was only a few years ago. That's not that long. We were seven. <laughs> I did watch a documentary today on the history of Beanie Babies from the 90s. The history? Yeah. It was like oh, an hour and 20 minutes. Do you know? Oh, my God. I can't remember. Oh, fuck. Who was I talking to? I can't remember if it was Cameron or if it was my nephew. About Beanie Babies? No, 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 no. But they said... Oh, no, no. It wasn't either of them. I saw an article. <laughs> I wasn't talking to anybody. Yeah, I, was, I, I read like, something. I, know, I thought... I had talked to both of them about it, but it... Um, ironically, I saw this, like, comment or article, and it was, like, um, about how America's Next Top Model is, like, pop culture history. It was, like... The way it was framed, it was just old. Okay. Um, it was like, oh, what's that word? I can't, oh, see, this is the problem with me. I can't think of the word. It was, um, nostalgic. Oh, okay. And I was like, fuck you. Fuck you up the ass. Because it was all sharp. focusing on, like, things from our childhood. But it yeah, was, like, well, because it wasn't that long ago. Like, for, no, like when we're not that old. nostalgic, like, it's like when people, oh, when people refer to 90s music as oldies, I'm like... Oh, listening to the radio, and they're like, we got some oldies today, and it's like... Girls. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and shoot me. Yeah, I'm like... It, Fucking excuse me? No, it's not. So then bastard. this is a nostalgic alien story exactly. from 1997. <laughs> from way back in the day. <laughs> when, when the, when the Beanie a- Baby craze was raging. <laughs> when lights in the sky meant the gods were angry. <laughs> 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 I don't know why I was an old version of Liza Minnelli. But, um, uh, so <laughs> I feel like... Okay, you're right. But um, so... Basically, this one I kind of skimmed through because it's really not that interesting in my opinion. Um, but mainly it's just like there's a whole bunch of people who see lights in the sky. And um, which I feel bad because I was like, this is one of the bigger ones. Um, but the, the military came out and said that they think it was just that they were doing some kind of like tests or something. Okay. With so aircraft. But, so it was like the government flares, flares. responded to this. Well, I mean, the government, in my opinion, always responds. And always, they always say it's something like military or weather balloons, or um, blimp, or a blimp. <laughs> <laughs> but um, something to know is that the lights were reported to have reappeared in two thousand seven and two thousand eight. Same were, area. Yeah, and were uh, attributed to military flares dropped by uh, fighter aircraft at Luke Air Force Base. And the, and then I I, I flagged this because I thought it was funny. And the flares are attached to helium balloons released by a civilian, respectively. And I was like, why is it always balloons? It's always balloons. Why like, is it always balloons? It is. It's, they're always like, oh, it's a balloon. Don't worry about it. It's fine. The FBI shows up. They were balloons. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> there's like it an, was a balloon. There's like an alien standing in the middle of the town, and the FBI is like, don't worry. It is just a very very big balloon. See, I'm just thinking, though, it's like when you go to Party City and they have all those balloon choices and it's like, you get like an Elsa balloon. It was like, it was a balloon. Not like it was like mm-hmm. a big balloon. I'm thinking like a Party City little helium guy. And yeah. they're like, alien. Yeah, like, like but because they always do, and, I, and I've noticed this like with everything. It's always like some weird weather phenomena, a balloon, or like, you know, like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, they always say the same thing. I'm like, you guys gotta get a little bit better than that. Well, didn't they, and I, could be completely wrong because I'm too afraid to look into this. Mm. Didn't they release a bunch of things recently? Like they meaning they the government did. about aliens. I'm actually glad you brought that up because I was going to bring up something similar and I can't remember if this came out with it, but there is a place in New York. It's like the Indian point nuclear power plant. No, thank you. And, um, there's a whole big thing about, um, aliens and UFOs being obsessed with nuclear technology. 
Um, mm. So they go to a lot of nuclear power plants. Don't love that. And there was apparently a massive sighting, like, in the middle of the day where a UFO came out of nowhere and just hovered over the power plant. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, a huge thing. I don't like that. And it was so funny because, and don't quote me because I could be totally remembering this wrong, but... My brother was talking to my dad about it. My dad was like, yeah, I worked there for a little bit. Or like, he had to go there for something. So he's clearly an alien. I think he's... You are, the, you so. are alien children. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm revealing myself more and more throughout the episode. Um, but it was like... It was so funny because it was like... It was like... It was just... And that whole area, like, across the... It's like... The, I think the Hudson's there. I don't... know, maybe not. I can't remember what river it is. But across the river, there's always a lot of um, UFO sightings and stuff like that. That's terrifying. Um, and I think that came out with the whole big thing. Because that was also what sparked the um, storming of Area 51 movement thing, which I really wish had happened. Oh, yeah. I really wish. See, like, I I block all of this out. Like, I, even mm-hmm. though, like, I know, like, Kevin was talking a lot about it when mm-hmm. this all happened. My brother was, like, really fascinated by it. They were both, like, talking to me. I just, like, completely just went, like... Don't listen one ear in, one out the other, because I am so afraid to, like, take in any of this alien knowledge. Yeah. What freaked me out the other day, I was, like, just, like, scrolling on social media. And as I'm a bad librarian, I did not do any further research besides reading the sentence, where it was, like, the NASA has gathered a grouping of theologians to discuss the possibility of extraterrestrial <laughs> life. And I'm, like, well, damn. <laughs> because means- if they're talking to a bunch of theologians about, like, what it would mean for there to be, like, an alien race or multiple mm-hmm. races and how that would affect our human society's belief in God or gods, that is... We're, we're getting there. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And it's, I feel like... I feel like if you ask a Christian person, like, what does it mean to you? They'd just be like, well, God made them too. Like, I feel like that's a pretty easy answer for them. Sure. But, like, I'm sure there are greater levels of like how even like the different factions of christianity would react like you know That's catholicism true. presbyterian or I, I i don't i don't even want to know <laughs> and like <laughs> i'm fascinated by like different the- theological beliefs or like yeah but i'm just i can't bring myself to be like why are we talking about this <laughs> I mean, I think it makes sense. It's such a weird thing for them to be focusing on if it's not for, like, any... I mean, I, once again, I never... I didn't double-check this, which was yeah. a very bad librarian move. I should have I always mean, checked fair, my sources. This is a podcast. If you came here for cold, hard facts, you came to the wrong place. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have never claimed to be experts of anything. And if you know me, that is very true. I'm not an expert on bullshit. But terrified me, that sentence. <clears throat> yeah, no, that would... that I, I think that's very interesting. I can see why it would terrify you, though. The one that, so I have two more for you. Okay. We're going to talk about one though first that realistically we could do a whole episode on this. This mm. is like one of, if not the biggest ones in my, that I think, I think I could be wrong. Maybe there's a bigger one. Some, some UFOologist oh. out there. Did you know they're UFOologists? No, but I'm not Which shocked. is a very hard word to say because UFO ends in O. and then UFOologist? I don't remember. I don't know if it's, if, if it's just the one O. Or in here, I don't find is it, it is there a hyphen in there? No, it's one word, but I can't remember if there's like a second. How, how o. do you get into that? Like, do you? I think you just claim it. Okay, <laughs> I, I was think, like, I don't think you go to Rutgers. For like, that. you know those schools <laughs> who can like make your major. I'm like, do you be like, you know what? I'm only gonna focus on UFO sightings. To be fair, if you could go to school and become a UFOologist, I would have done it already. I wanted to. Uh, I someone I heard of like did a major in like murder and they studied like kind of like the history of something like you can focus on murder well i think it was like a create your own degree thing where you have to like then like rationalize okay but how do you explain to somebody like oh what did you study in college i studied murder murder. yeah i'm not hiring you who knows i mean what if like you end up working for the fbi you sound like a murderer they'll double check why would your expertise (laughs) be murder i don't know if it was murder could have been like satan (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, wait a minute. okay those, those two very similar things <laughs> you know satan or murder or i don't know i think my brother would remember oh we'll have to ask him yeah so the the big one is barney and betty hill have you ever heard of them no okay they are they're, their experience is very very um very well known um and it happened Okay. It happened, sorry, um, September 19th to September 20th, 1961. Okay, so this is the earliest one we've talked about today. 
Yeah, it's definitely not the earliest one, but this is one of the bigger ones. And granted, I like I said, on that Wikipedia page that I pulled up, I think I scrolled all the way down to like starting at like the 60s or 70s. Okay. There are ones much earlier than that. I might have I might have started with the 50s, but I don't think I grabbed any from there. But um did it, it mention Oh no, that's a lie. <laughs> My favorite one is from 1955. Did they mention on the Wikipedia page like when people started reporting UFO sightings? If they did, I didn't read it. Okay. <laughs> that to me I think is fascinating. That would of, like, be interesting. I wish I had thought of that. Like the history behind like when people started really believing in this concept Hmm. i don't know i feel like this has probably been going on for like since like the dawn of time because like when you think about like what um ancient people like when they looked in the sky and they saw and they thought it was like gods and everything i would be surprised if some of them didn't think it was people from other places yeah okay but we have to think about the concept of what they thought earth was for a long time that's true so that's very fair so i guess it would have been more during like the enlightenment then Right? I really when, don't like, know. the heliocentric model and stuff like that. Is that during the Enlightenment? What's his face? Uh, Christopher something? Uh, yeah, it could be maybe a little bit earlier, too. Um, yeah. But kind of, like, the study of, like, the heavens and the world. I, I'm just I'm interested, like, when they thought of anybody else beyond besides, like, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. At least gotcha. for Christianity-minded people. Yeah. No, that's fair. I mean, it's funny. Okay, so I have watched so many, like, documentaries Mm. about like the pyramids and like one of, and, and are you talking about like ancient aliens or are you no about, no no, okay. no i've never really watched ancient aliens i did watch i i got sparked onto it and you're gonna hate this because of it has to do with the pyramids it had to do with the concept of what the pyramids were actually used for mm-hmm. that like so like, obviously the prevailing um and we could do a whole episode on this honestly because this does creep me out a little bit but it's cool um the prevailing thought is obviously that they were tombs, but then some people were like, no, like the pyramids at Giza were actually like healing centers and that the way that they're shaped, like the tri- the pyramid shape and everything. And like the way that the Nile used to run underneath it used to create like, um, like a pitch or something. Hmm. And it was like, it was like very healing and it was like, like, I don't want to use the word like a spa, but it was like the spas like, of Bath. Yeah, the, but it's a pyramid. Like, in but it's a pyramid, yeah. But no, but if you look at like the pyramids of Giza, where they are, the three of them, like the Nile used to be right up, like almost like right up against them, and they have since moved further away or something. I don't. I mean, granted, I am not. Oh, I've never heard this one before. The, it's, I forget what the name of the doc. It was on Netflix. I watched it. and I thought it was like the most interesting thing. And then it talked about ley lines and all that fun stuff, which, you know, anybody who's listening is like, Jesus Christ, this guy's an idiot. But um, my favorite thing about it, though, was that it talked about different civilizations having very similar structures mm-hmm. that were along the centers of ley lines. Okay. But how would they have ever communicated that? And then it also was, it had to do with like... Well, that kind of goes back to like, for me, I think about civilizations having that similar like flood story that all of them have yeah. like the same like similarity of there was a great flood. Yeah. But it's not like Noah and the ark for yeah. every, so it's like there, I think there what there must've been, there must've been this really great deluge and yeah. then they all responded to it. Exactly. And they created their own mythology about it. Yeah. So, um, which we should, we should, oh, we should write this down. This should be another episode. Sorry. <laughs> Cause this, I think it's interesting and slightly creepy. Another thing that, that aliens like crop circles freak me out. Oh, I didn't think to talk about um, crop circles. I'm mad terrified. now. Terrified. And then when I went to Peru with my dad and brother about seven years ago, yeah. eight years ago, there was um, the Nazca lines, which are on like near like, I forgot which area. That? Peru. I'm like really bad at geography. <laughs> um. Was it Nazca? Is that a place in Peru? <laughs> sure. <I don't> <laughs> we went in a really tiny airplane and yeah. I was just trying so hard not to vomit. Um, because... Fair enough. <laughs> but it... there was a blimp and it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, they were amazing because like you have to go up to see the way that these lines have been drawn in the yeah. earth. And if anyone walks by them, you could still trample and ruin the design. So like, they're protected. How long have they been there? Do you know? A long time. We should talk about that in an episode. Because there's other places like that where they have found, like, even like, like what, Scotland. Like, if we're thinking, it, right? like, ancient art and, I mean, like, the people talk about, like, Stonehenge, yeah. all of this, they, they attribute and how they to found aliens. Out recently, like, they, wasn't at the, uh, weren't the Easter Island heads, like, isn't there, like... We could, yeah, you're right, kind of, like, all of this, kind of, unex- people th- claim as unexplainable... Well, like, how did you get mega- this here? Yeah, yeah, then the people attribute to aliens. Yeah. But we I will then... Here respond with an art historical context well that's fair the artist the very the very sought after art historical context <laughs> and, i know you've all been pyramids. waiting for it <laughs> this perspective on how we built the pyramids from the art history 
perspective. You'll get really excited. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about this. Uh, yeah, we went on a little tangent. Sorry. <laughs> Betty so, and Lou who? Betty and Lou who. No, that's, <laughs> um, that's the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> this is Barney and Betty Hill. In, um, it was September 19th to 20th, 1961. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little reading here. This one, realistically, I could do like a lot of reading on. But I do think the actual encounter is kind of funny and interesting. Not funny, but a little funny. So, according to a variety of reports given by the Hills, the alleged UFO sighting happened about 10.30 p.m. on September 19th, 1961. Mm. The Hills were driving to Portsmouth. They're from New Hampshire. Um, okay. From a vacation in Niagara Falls and Montreal, just south of Lancaster, New Hampshire, Betty claimed to have observed a bright point of light in the sky that moved from below the moon and the planet Jupiter upward to the west of um, of the moon. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Again, that's Wikipedia. Which, by the way, I think it's super interesting that she knew that that was Jupiter. But, um... Well, it's like, I know Jupiter, it's like very bright and red. Yeah. So she must... Betty knew what was going on already. I mean, she must have, because if I saw that, I'd be like, what the fuck is that? I, I mean, maybe they talked about it in the news or something, or she just is really well-versed in... In, um, in the Jupiters. In Jupiter, yeah. <laughs> She's the <laughs> modern-day Galileo. Um, while Barney navigated U.S. Route 3, Betty reasoned that she was observing a falling star, only it moved upward. Because it moved erratically and grew bigger and brighter, Betty urged Barney to stop the car for a closer wo- uh, closer look, as well as to walk their dog, Desley. <laughs> Or Delcy. De- I'm sorry, Delcy. It's not Desley? No, it's not Desley. <laughs> Although I like Desley more. Forgive me, I'm a little bit, um, I almost, oh my God. <laughs> you're, you're doing great. I was going to say I'm a little bit anorexic. Uh, uh, a little bit dyslexic. <laughs> and I almost said I'm a little bit anorexic <laughs> because I can't talk. I don't know why. Sorry to anybody. That's a little bit triggering. Um, Barney stopped at a scenic picnic area just south of Twin Mountain. To walk the dog. Yeah, and so that she could look at the um, what she thought was a falling star that was moving upward okay. and getting bigger and clearly headed right for them. This is very Don't Look Up. Um, I have not seen it yet. Don't oh, the, oh, just kidding. You should watch that. It's great. Although, okay. And we have to talk about that at some point. Well, end of the world. Yeah. Well, not even just... Oh, we can talk literally about the Earth getting hit by a meteor. It creeps me the fuck out. Like, a lot. Mm-mm. So... Betty, looking through binoculars, observed an odd-shaped craft flashing multicolored lights travel across the face of the moon. Oh, no. Yeah, so, you know, it's E.T. He's in the basket. <laughs> no. Just, just, just Let hears, him die. She just hears in the distance, ouch. And I'm like, stab, stab, stab. <laughs> Because her sister had several years earlier said she had seen a flying saucer, Betty thought it might be what she was observing. Okay. Through binoculars, Barney observed what he reasoned was a commercial airliner traveling toward Vermont on its way to Montreal. Very reasonable. Right? Uh, fair. However, he soon changed his mind because without looking as if it had turned, the craft rapidly descended in his direction. The observation caused Barney to realize this object was a plane that was a plane was not a plane. And that's in quotes. They quickly returned to the car and drove toward Franconia Notch, a narrow mountainous stretch of the road. Okay. The hill said they continued driving on the isolated road, moving very slowly through for, uh, Franconia Notch in order to observe the object as it came even closer. At one point, the object passed above a restaurant and a, and signal tower on top of Cannon Mountain and came out near the old man of the mountain. Forgive me. This is all very weird to read because it's like they're saying things like I have any idea. Where old, old man of the mountain. That that that's And that's like capitalized. That's a thing. I okay, so that a, a very... Precise yeah. location. Came out near the old man of the mountain. That is a place, I guess. Betty testified that it was at least one and a half times the length of the granite cliff profile, which was 40 feet long, and that, uh, 12 meters if you don't use the imperial system, and that it seemed to be rotating. Oh, no. Yeah, which, you know, is normal of a commercial airliner. Yeah. The couple watched <laughs> as, the, as the silent, illuminated craft moved erratically and bounced back and forth in the night sky. How how far is it from them? Like they're saying right this moment, like if they're I mean, like you at know this point at it's the old man. Be, I mean, without knowing the area, I would say it's probably a. I don't know, but I mean, like it's, it's near them. We'll put it's it that pretty way. close to them. Yeah. It's not like this far enough concept in the sky. I don't. I don't think so. It, in order for her to have. You know, testified that it was at least one and a half times the length of the granite cliff profile. I feel like it has to be close enough that they can really okay, get a good Okay, she can give a good size. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
about one mile south of Indian Head, they say, which also, before we even continue, wouldn't you have driven the fuck away by now? Okay, what did I say earlier? You don't drive towards <laughs> right? the UFO. Very true. You drive away from and the that's UFO. That's why you have never had an alien encounter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I'd be gone by now. I'd be like, yeah, no thanks. I'm great. I think you would drive towards it. You, no. You're so inquisitive no, no. with this guy. I think if it was really far away, I would maybe drive a little bit closer to see it. But if it started to come at me, I'd be like, mm mm. Not, okay. No. Okay. Fair. Look, I you know I'm single, but I don't need that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> about one mile south of Indian Head, they said the object rapidly descended toward their vehicle, causing Barney to stop in the middle of the highway. Oh no, Barney! Right? Oh wait, he's not the dog. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's Del Delcy. Delzio. Del. Uh, I I said Desley, so it's Delcy. <laughs> Dozy. Dozy. Yes. <laughs> Which is a weird name, by the way, Delcy. Well, Betty dog. sounds like a strange one. Betty? Yeah, mm, maybe. I don't know. The huge silent craft hovered about 80 to 100 feet above the hill's 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air. That is, that's close. That that's very, very close. close. And filled the entire field of view in the windshield. No. That's scary. It reminded Barney of a huge pancake. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's the IHOP. <laughs> it's IHOP coming to uh, New Hampshire. Kyle would die happy. Right. Carrying his pistol in his pocket, he stepped away from the vehicle and moved closer to the object. This, to me, is like, you are not the brightest. Oh, no. A pancake. Let me shoot it. A literal spaceship is 80 feet above you. And you're like, Betty, it's fine. I have a pistol. I got a pistol. (laughs) I got this. You hold Denzel. We're good. (laughs) You know what? A good guy with a gun. (laughs) Um... Using the binoculars. Binoculars? Yes. It's right above their head. <laughs> it's right there. I don't know if I head. see it. <laughs> Using the binoculars, Barney claimed to have seen eight to 11 humanoid figures who were peering out the craft's windows. Okay, where are the windows? Is it like a downstairs sunroof? I don't know because I, I have no idea. I just love that using the binoculars, like, I, I feel like it's like that Spider-Man meme where it's like them pointing at each other. They're both sitting there with binoculars staring <laughs> at each other. He looks up and they're just like, hi, Barney. Yeah, like, hey, Barney. How you doing? <laughs> love your dog. Um... Okay, so binoculars looking yeah. up, he Sorry. sees this, yeah. like, window of aliens. In unison, all but one figure moved to what appeared to be a panel on the rear wall of the... Wait, hold on, did I skip something? <laughs> nope, nope, that's the correct next line. Okay, in unison, all but one figure moved to what appeared to be a panel on the rear wall of the hallway that encircled the front portion of the craft. That means nothing to me. I just know they're coming out of it. This was the one remaining figure continued to look at Barney and communicated a message telling him to stay where you are and keep looking. No, why? I don't know. Barney had maybe he's gonna put a movie on. Barney had a (laughs) recollection of observing the humanoid forms wearing glossy black uniforms and black caps. It's the Russian black (laughs) caps. I'm imagining like um, a swim cap. Like, very tight, very form-fitting. It's a yarmulke. Um, <laughs> oh, they were also celebrating the Jewish they're holiday. There, they're all there, yeah. Red lights on what appeared to be bat wing fins began to telescope out of the sides of the craft. Okay. And a long structure descended from the bottom of the craft. The silent craft approached to what Barney estimated was within 50 to 80 feet overhead and 300 feet away from him. On October 21st, 1961, Barney reported to the National Investigations Community, uh, Committee on Aerial Phenomenon, NICAP, investigator Walter Webb, that beings were somehow not human. Okay. Barney tore, that's in quotes, the binoculars away from his eyes and ran back to his car. In a near hysterical state, he told Betty, they're going to capture us. <laughs> he saw the object again shift its location to directly above the vehicle. He drove away at high speed, telling Betty to look for the object, <laughs> which, how do you lose it? Um, it's a giant pancake in right? the sky. Yeah. I guess, I guess they went incognito at that point. She rolled down the window and looked up. Almost immediately, the hills heard a rhythmic series of beeping or buzzing sounds, which they said seemed to bounce off the trunk of their vehicle. Okay, what did I tell you before? Beep, beeps. Yeah, this is what you were right. <laughs> it's the beep, beep, that, that. <laughs> The car vibrated and a tingling sensation passed through the Hill's bodies. Oh, no. The Hill said that they experienced the onset of an altered state of consciousness that left their minds dulled. 
a second series. Even more dull, Barney? Ooh, yeah, right. A2? We, we, something happens later that I thought was hilarious. They A second series of beeping or buzzing sounds return the couple to full consciousness. Oh, did, I, did I skip something? Okay, sorry. they hear the beep, beep, boop, boops. That yeah. They hear the vibration, or they feel the vibration. Yeah, sorry. And then the hill said that they experienced the onset of an altered state of consciousness, that left their minds dulled. Sorry, okay. The second series of beeping or buzzing sounds returned the couple to full consciousness. They found that they had traveled nearly 35 miles south, but had only vague, spotty memories of this section of the road. They recalled making a sudden, sharp, unplanned turn, encountering a roadblock, and observing a fiery orb in the road. No. So the immediate aftermath... <laughs> is forgive me this is i I, i'm sorry because this is a lot of reading but you can't not this is a this is a story yeah it's a story and it's a really big one in the um ufo community oh okay so i will never be a part of no maybe after this who knows i'm gonna reach (laughs) out to you arriving home at about dawn the hills assert that they had some odd sensation and impulses they could not readily explain betty insist insisted their luggage be kept near the back door rather than the main part of the house their watches would never work again Barney said that the leather strap from the, for the binoculars was torn, though he could not recall it tearing. Huh. The toes of his best dress shoes were scraped. <laughs> and then my favorite one, Barney says he was compelled to examine his genitals in the bathroom, <laughs> though he found nothing unusual. <laughs> Just like, I must check. <laughs> Honey, I gotta check my dick. <laughs> we met aliens, they went straight to the dick. It's, it's such a, yeah. What? Um... They, um, and, and what I love about it is that Barney did, but it doesn't say that Betty felt the same compulsion. <laughs> I feel like Barney's compulsions were very different with the story than Betty. Yeah, Betty just, knew it was all about the Jupiter and the moon. Yeah, and uh, Barney wanted to make sure the family jewels made it home. That was what it was. <laughs> uh, they took long showers to remove possible contamination and each drew a picture of what they had observed. They had observed. So, over, over to, so that we don't, so I don't just keep reading Essentially, what happens is they eventually contact somebody about their story. Okay. They talk about it. Um, one of the, actually, who Betty um, contacts is um, a Marine Corps major who's got my favorite last name of all time because his name is Donald E. Kehoe. Oh, look at yeah. him. Um, and um, the other thing that's really big about this is um, 10 days after the alleged UFO encounter, Betty began having a series of vivid dreams. Mm. Um, they continued for five successive nights. And I'm reading again, forgive me. Okay. Never in her memory had she recalled dreams in such detail and intensity, but they stopped uh, But they stopped abruptly after five nights and never returned. They occupied her thoughts during the day. When she mentioned them to Barney, he was sympathetic but not too concerned, and the matter was dropped, unlike his genitals. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and Betty did not mention them to Barney again. But basically, of the dreams, what she remembers is, I think it's that her, she starts to recall... That, the, that period of time. Well, the abduction. Yeah. yeah. And she talks about um, there being, like, a leader who talks to her in kind of, like, broken English and, like, going through some testing. And then he goes to give her a book at some point. but then, As a gift? Yeah, like, to take with her, which I thought was very nice. You know, we're going to test on you. We're going to shove this thing in your but belly button. But here's a book. But here's a, you know, yeah, exactly. Like That's a, little a lovely Christmas gift, present. Right? But then a, f- a fight breaks out amongst the aliens, and they decide not to give it to her because they don't want her to remember anything. Or was it their favorite book? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we only have one copy, Jim. <laughs> oh, you can't give it to Maybe her. Maybe it's like a special collections library. Yeah. It's not circulating. Yeah. So they were, like, they were hypnotized and, like, talked about their, like, experience and stuff like that. And they uh, traveled for... It was at 35 miles. 35 miles. And they, and they had they, no they, recollection. They had lost time, yeah. Um, minus Betty's dreams. And at one point, um, sh- the the one alien, like, tells her, like, where they're from or something. I can't remember what it is, but he, like, points out a specific star map that she then draws and it matches an actual star map. Okay, but the thing is, I think Betty was pretty familiar with stars and planets because she was like, oh, well, Jupiter's especially the, bright yeah. tonight. Well, because that's why it's also known as the Zeta Reticuli incident because that's, I think, the star map that she um, oh, okay. that she pulled up. She, I think, and I'm, I'm 99%, I, I shouldn't say 99% sure. I'm and pretty also, sure she like, claimed that she didn't know like, where she, it was. Well, okay, but also, like, they, you mentioned that she was familiar with this whole concept of extraterrestrial life because her sister said that she saw a UFO previously. Yeah, but I mean, like, that, I mean, it's hard because it's like, I don't realistically know if, like, she had any actual, um, she seemed I'm, very intrigued I, by I it. I don't know Betty. And I don't know oh, Barney. My favorite rebuttal. Sorry, continue. No, oh, sorry, no, I'm just saying, like, I don't know them from adam but yeah 
It just sounds like Betty came with a lot of information. Yeah. Betty did seem to have a better idea of what was going on. And I think she was intrigued by the fact that it could be an ex, um, extraterrestrial She was situation ready for because, it. Yeah. But I mean, I think it was just kind of like, she's like, oh, my sister said she saw him. Maybe I'm seeing one. You know, like, I don't know. Okay. But I, I mean, I don't know, maybe. My favorite rebuttal, though, and this is something interesting, because obviously it's the 1960s and they are an interracial couple. Okay. Betty was white, Barney was black. Um, the, the, the first rebuttal of the Hills is, psychiatrists later suggested that the supposed abduction was a hallucination brought on by the stress of being an interracial couple in oh the early 1960s United States. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is a weak argument. That is <laughs> very weak the argument. most ridiculous thing. Yeah. I've ever heard. Right? That's stupid. That was that was dumb. And I'm sure that there's other rebuttals that are maybe a little bit more... Um... How did the dog react? Yeah, nobody ever thinks about that. Did he check his genitals when he got home? <laughs> he must have licked them. I bet you he did. <laughs> <laughs> did he leave his bags by the front door? Right? What about me? What about Telsey? <laughs> These bags were... by the door. <laughs> well, that's what Betty said. I mean, Betty left her shit. Okay, but I love how there was that one alien who was like, hey, you, you you stay there. You watch me. Yeah, which makes no sense. Like, what is that message? Just keep looking. What? Okay. But like, okay, if all the other ones are leaving to do their business of the abduction process and the other one's just like, he's like, hey, 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 guys, just go stand right here. Just want to make contact. Yeah, just. Or maybe it was his first one. Maybe. Yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe he was just studying his face. Who knows? (laughs) He was like, keep (laughs) looking, okay? Um. So yeah, that's the Barney and Betty Hill that, story. That reminds me a little bit of, I think it was in the first season of Unsolved Mysteries, of, like, mm. of the reboot one, mm. which I had a very hard time watching because it was so scary. Um, we, um, it was not we, I was not there. I think it was in Massachusetts. <laughs> <I> was <not laughs> there. Um, in that really like really quiet part of it, I'm forgetting what it was. Anyway, <laughs> they were, um, it was like this very small town and a lot of people within that community experienced an alien abduction really? that night. It was a very That's scary, terrifying. yeah, and that there was like a report or something on the radio. Then that footage, like re- the recording, was like lost or something. Um, but the the scariest story that I'm remembering from these townsfolk telling this tale was that people were driving home from some event. It was a mm-hmm. mother, her mother, so a, a grandmother and two kids were in the back seat. Okay, and they said they were driving and they said this beam of light, right? Kind of similar to his Betty story. Yeah, everybody sees a beam. A beam of light. And they're driving, and then time's, like, you know, is skipped for them. They're then returned to their places. Okay. But they're not in the location that they were at before. Which is terrifying. Terrifying. But what was different was that this grandmother was behind the wheel. And the oh. mother was then in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> the mother was dead. <laughs> but, like, the, the kid who was talking, like, yeah. who was now, like, you know, an adult now, was saying, they messed up, meaning they, yeah. I mean, the aliens, because he goes, my grandmother can't drive. Oh. So. <laughs> the, the girl was like, ah! <laughs> in some death. Yeah, but, like, right, right into the wall. <laughs> but, like, that, to me, stuck with me, because he was yeah. like, she would... She can't, she would never be behind the wheel. Yeah, she never would have gotten in, so gotten into the car that they, way. So they put us back in the wrong places. Oh, that's crazy. And to me, I'm just like, oh, I don't like that. Yeah. And he immediately inspected his genitals. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite. Like, I, just reading that, like, on a thing, like, because you imagine being like, well, I immediately, I, I had to check my dick. Had to. <laughs> And you know the officer was like, "No, I totally understand. Like, I got it. Was, it. was everything there?" I'm just imagining like a ton two of... piece on the biscuit there. Yeah, you good. A ton of FBI reports, and they're all like, "Oh, alien abduction. Check dick immediately." <laughs> but like, have you checked your dick, sir? Like on the form, it's like you know what happened. Beam of light. Check dick. <laughs> I noticed I was not the first one to check my dick that day, <laughs> and that's when I knew something was amiss. <laughs> it's just. Like... <laughs> That is that that is part of like oh this really God. famous alien report yeah. is amazing. I shouldn't make fun. It was just such a funny thing to like note. Like, put down our suitcases, saved our clothes, check my dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but also like his, his like his fancy yeah. shoes. You were saying like they yeah, were scuffed. His dress shoes. They were, were they the ones he was wearing? They were in the case. I'm assuming it was the ones he was wearing, and it, I think we're supposed to infer that maybe since he was, they, like, were dragged. Scared, they were dragged, yeah. I would think that Which they would had go this against, levitation. But it would go against Betty's dreams because they were kind of like in a hypnotic state and they like walked. But again, now, like I said, I read like the abduction and I didn't 
go super crazy into the rest of it. So there okay. could be something. Well, you know, maybe that. he dragged his feet with the whole. The exactly. Whole he could have just been, yeah, like it could be from running. Who knows? I have no idea. So I want to talk to you about my favorite hoax that I found. Okay. So this is like a determined hoax. I want to say it is. I think it is based off of the reading of it. Maybe it's not. Um, it's the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter. Um, it happened in 1955, and this is the story where the birth of the term Little Green Men comes from. Okay, that's <laughs> and interesting. It, and it's my favorite. It happened, um, uh, it happened near Kelly and Hopkinsville in Christian County, Kentucky, United States, 1955. Christian County, Kentucky. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. absolutely. That is a place. Um, while skeptics say the reports were due to the effects of excitement. Of course. And misidentification of natural phenomenon such as meteors and owls. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my favorite. Only because it immediately made me think of the documentary on Netflix, The Staircase, where they're like, <laughs> it was an owl. It was clearly an owl. <laughs> I don't know what it is with people being like, have we thought about, about the an owl? owl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I could shoot somebody on the street and they'll be like, well, owls we- work in weird patterns. I'm feeling like, to add now to this alien checklist. Mm, it's like... Owls. Weather balloons? You- Balloons? Did you check your dick? Check your dick. Was it an owl? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see an owl, Jim? Was it near your dick? <laughs> All right. So here are the claims. Are you ready? I'm going to do a little bit of reading. This one's not long, I promise. Best of luck. This is the fucking funniest thing ever. So on the evening of August 21st, 1955... Five adults and seven children arrived at the Hopkinsville police station claiming that small alien creatures from a spaceship were attacking their farmhouse and they had been holding them off with gunfire for nearly four (laughs) hours. (laughs) So it's basically a modern day version of the Alamo. (laughs) With the beep beeps. With the beep beeps and the zap zaps. Two of the adults, Elmer Sutton and Billy Ray Taylor, claimed they had been shooting at 12 to 15 short, dark figures who repeatedly popped up at the doorway or peered into the windows. These were just children in alien costumes. I I don't think so. (laughs) I think the reasoning comes through later. So, concerned about a possible gun battle between local (laughs) citizens... Which I guess is a normal thing. Sure. Four city police, five state troopers, and three deputy chef. I'm sorry, three deputy sheriffs and four military police from the nearby U.S. Army Fort Campbell drove to the Sutton farmhouse located near the town of Kelly and Christian County. That is a lot of fucking. That's um, a lot cops. of a response. That's like one for every person okay. involved in the farmhouse. <laughs> but like also five adults and seven kids in this one farmhouse. Seven, oh. yeah, seven children. Um. Their search yielded nothing apart from evidence of gunfire and holes in windows and door screens made by firearms. Of course. Residents of the farmhouse included Glennie Lankford, her children, Lonnie, Charlton, and Mary, two sons from a previous marriage, Elmer, um, in quotes, Lucky Sutton, John Charlie, in quotes, J.C. Sutton, and their respective wives, Vera and Aileen. Aileen. I don't know how to spell it. Alien. It's, it's, right? It's <laughs> A-L-E-N-E. Um, Aileen's brother, O.P. Baker, and Billy Ray Taylor, and his wife, June. Both the Taylors, Lucky, and Vera Sutton, were reportedly um, itinerant carnival workers that were visiting the farmhouse. I don't know why. Of course. Of course they were. <laughs> I was like, why is that important information that they're carnival workers? Carnies are terrifying, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we mean no disrespect to anybody. Um <laughs> I just, I was like, that is such a weird thing to um, uh, flag. The next day, neighbors told two officers that the families had packed up and left after claiming the creatures had returned about 3.30 in the morning. Okay, nothing good happens between 3 and 4 a.m. No, nothing. Um, So what makes it, what I love so much about this is in the Wikipedia page, they have like a little diagram with like a guy who's like waving. And then there's like the alien that they described, like showing like, it's supposed to show like. um, Like the height? Yeah, like how tall he is. And the pop, they called him the Hopskinville Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little goblin guy. So, yeah. So, um, so the they were supposed to be about two to four feet tall, described as having large pointed ears, claw like hands, eyes that glowed yellow, and spindly legs. Ew. Yeah, and that's like how the press covered it. So the explanation is that. Um, you know, it is plausible, if not likely, that the aliens were great horned owls, <laughs> which I don't... Okay, I'm sorry. I... When have you seen a great horned owl meet that description? 
I mean, to be fair, looking at a great horn owl, it does kind of fit what they described. And the only reason why I would give it any credence is Between because... Between two and four feet tall. They're they're pretty big, great horn owls. How big? They're, I mean, I'd say they're at least two feet tall. Okay, but like, if you... Oh, the wingspan, I know, is fantastically but great. Even, well, how, well, let's see how tall they are. Because, like, I'm thinking, like... Also, why would there be 15 great horned owls attacking this farmhouse? Well, uh, well, it's funny. They actually mentioned why that is a potential. Okay. Um, but, oh, here. I, I want to say they can be at least two feet tall. I wouldn't be surprised. But, uh, well, but, and there is some evidence that the eyewitnesses may have been intoxicated. Of course. So, so you're talking about a bunch of. They got that carnival juice. A bunch of people juice. in a Kentucky farmhouse with guns who may have been drinking <laughs> and saw an owl and thought it was an alien. <laughs> but, like, not just one owl, right? Because there's multiple. Yeah, well, but apparently, so, it was noted that um, the family could have misidentified eagle owls or great horned owls, which are, noctur- are nocturnal, fly silently, have yellow eyes, and aggressively defend their nests. Okay. So, if there was a nest in the area, potentially they could have been... You know, a little sure. bit more aggressive. I've never had the um, honor of being attacked by a great horned owl, so I would not. I don't know. think you would do well. No, probably not. Um, oh, and apparently, great horned owls, which do stand about two thirds of a meter tall, I don't know what that is. Um, okay. In, um, you know, American. It's like with like, the <laughs> Mothman thing, like how there's a crane yeah. that they believe. It's all these evil birds, but yeah, I, I it's love always an owl. a bird. I mean, I I guess it would, like, make sense based off of, like, the, like, they showed, like, a picture of, like, what they described, and it does kind of look like you could mistake, like, it could have been mistaken for an owl. But at the same time, it's just funny to me that they Why shoot green? an owl. Why green little men? That came up, um, it, did, it wasn't initially reported that way. Okay. And, like, other various, um... News articles, they changed it to green for whatever reason, or it got, like, miscommunicated, and that's just kind of how that happened. When did the big heads come into play? I don't know. I think that's a different, um, whatchamacallit, um... I don't like the spindly legs. Yeah, they were supposed to be, like, Also, owls don't have spindly legs. They got, like, the little tufties. They, they have those skinny little bird legs. Owls? But they got, like, all the little feathers there. I mean, yeah, but if they're, like, flying or something and their legs are hanging down... They're not that spindly. I mean, they're thin. Okay. Right? I, I don't know. I, I would not call imagine, an owls like Okay, thin. but imagine you're a, you know... An intoxicated Kentucky Carney. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it that way, but sure. Um, so, fun fact, though. Um, there, a lot of pop culture has been inspired by this. So there really? is like There is a... Um, the Kelly community now celebrates the anniversary of the event on the third weekend of every August with an event called the Kelly Gr- Little Green Men um, Days. Okay. Um, they uh, The 1986 comedy horror film Critters is loosely ba- uh, based on the Kelly Hopkins Bell case, based like the um, the little critter. Oh. Um, the Pokemon Stable Eye um, is based on the goblins described in the encounter. Huh. Yep. Um, Love there, a Pokemon. Yeah, I think there was another funny one that I was like, oh, that's interesting. Nope, just kidding. Um, so yeah, they're like, so it has like permeated, obviously beyond. Sure. I did not, I was, when I pulled this up, I was not expecting it to be like what started the Little Green Men, but I think that was hilarious. Um, I that, would have never guessed in a million years that that's what started the Little Green Men. Oh, me either. And I just think it's so funny because I could literally see, um, you know, literally, what is that? Five adults, that's 12 people, all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> there are seven children. All drunk. Um, <laughs> who shot an owl. No like, disrespect, by the way, to any Kentuckian or look, Carney. I'd do the same thing. If I was drunk at home and an owl was looking at me, I'd be like, there's a fucking alien in the I, window. I don't think I, I think I'd be like, let's look at the owl. Right? <laughs> Not... That must be an alien. No, I think you would jump straight to aliens. You're so terrified of them. If you saw something that you didn't recognize immediately staring at you through the window, would you think, oh, it's an owl? Not with Mothman. Oh, there you go. Okay. But that's because of the movie. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Mothman's terrifying. Chapstick. That's his own episode. Mothman gets his own episode for sure. Um, I always think of them like, I don't know. I think of them standing in the middle of my lawn. That's because I do too, but I mean, it, I don't know why, because it's like, like, even like with serial killers and horror movies and that kind of stuff. Right I'm in the middle of the lawn. Like right in the middle of the lawn. Like with the moon hitting them just right. I think it's because it's like, they're not trying to hide. That makes yeah. it scary. Um, and then like, of course you're the only one who sees them. Yep. No, it's that. That's creepy. And like, 
that my backyard exist. looks it's like a large long yard yeah. that then leads into a forest so I'm just like <laughs> a forest is a um a very uh, liberal term of what is it's, it's definitely a thick thick it's woods lo- it's like a mile long forest is it a forest? yes is it classified as a forest I, it, I feel like forests have to be bigger than it's that. a grouping of a large grouping of trees we call that woods <laughs> <laughs> woods <laughs> I think you're right. It's like that they, they're letting me see them, which is what would terrify yeah, me. Yeah, they're not afraid of you seeing them in the in the yard. But also like, like that happenstance of that's when I open my curtain and peer out when I'm doing like my 3 a.m. have to go to the bathroom because right? I drank too much before bed. Which means he's been staying there from at least for, midnight. He's like, I got to wait. paranormal activity yeah. just like, I'm just going to stand here and hover for I like I just got to wait till she hours. opens that curtain. And then that's when I'm going to reveal myself. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Now he's check the pe- genitals. Now he, he wants, oh, see these genitals? Check these out. He's just a flasher. But I always think of it like as a very tall, thin... Fr- I guess it's the signs alien. That's what comes to my head. Yeah, I mean, I think most people picture aliens being like freakishly tall and like very thin and like mm-hmm. lanky and spindly. But humanoid. Yeah, but like human shaped so that it's like... It's close enough to comfort, but it's just slightly off. But then how egotistical is it that we think of an alien race as a similar build to our own? I mean, I agree. I I feel like there might be a reason for that, but I don't really know why. Like, what if it, they're just, like, pots of jelly? Like a jellyfish? No, I mean, like, I'm thinking, like, think a mason jar. I think there's series of jellyfish or aliens. They, I don't like it when they sting me. <laughs> I have yet to meet anybody who does. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what if they're like, you know, a pile of snakes or an octopus? Well, I mean, it's like, you know, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I guess they, they could be. Realistically, I think they would probably look different. Um, there's no reason well, to think Also, it matters like, like the climate that that planet yeah, is. Yeah, or the amount of pressure, like gravitational yeah. pull, um, you know, all that fun stuff. The climate, whether or not the um, planet actually spins fully, like a lot goes into that. It's going to be interesting. I'm really hoping that these theologians uh, have a good talking with NASA if that was real. <laughs> that that would be, I think, well, let's talk, let's, before we end the episode, let's do, you know, just one more quick thing since we're only, what, an hour and a half in. Um, you know, what, oh God, I forgot what I was going to ask you now. <laughs> what were you just saying? <laughs> what was he do? Oh, um, no, no, it was a theologian. What would we do if tomorrow... Like, all of the officials, all the authority, they come out and they're like, listen, it's time for us to tell you. Aliens are real. Well, isn't that what they kind of did with that release of information? No, it was just, I think it was just that after a certain amount of time, they have to declassify. There's like a law. They have to declassify information after a certain amount of time. And what was that information? Because like, once again, I'm not reading In that case, a whole bunch of what was being declassified had to do with aliens and UFOs. I don't think the whole thing was about that. I just think okay. that a lot of it was that. Okay, so like then let's <clears> say that you said like tomorrow the powers that be are like, you know what? It's time for us to sit you down and tell you. Yeah, like 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 you know, like breaking news. It's like the the freaking Oval Office uh, presidential seal. And like all of and the things like, around the world. Americans. Yeah, like are like, you know, we're all yeah. telling you at the same time. We got to tell you about this. It's time to know. Yeah. Um I don't think I would do well. I feel like that would cause a, ma- a major panic. Well, I guess it wouldn't cause a major panic if, unless they were like, they're on their way. You know? <laughs> it, I mean, it, would, it would change the way so many people view their life and like, kind of the life of humanity. Would it, though? I think it would. I, I mean, to me, I mean, like, if they, I guess the only thing, I think most people would be mad because, like, we've talked about this and, like, kind of, like, ostracized people who, like, are very, like, like, I believe in this, this happened to me, and we're like, oh, you're crazy. And then, like, for them to come out and be like, oh, just so you know. <laughs> it's real. You know, <laughs> Billy Ray did have some stuff go up his butt. <laughs> <laughs> what was that uh, SNL joke that you showed me? The one where <laughs> the With alien Kate abducted you to Kate McKinnon? Yeah. And then she... <laughs> Not the same experience. <laughs> They're all like, the other two, uh, Ryan... What's his face? Gosling. Uh, Gosling. And I for, I don't know her name at the time. They're like, oh, you know, uh, I saw a beautiful Ray a lot. I felt like I was very much at peace. It was one of the best moments of my life. And then she's like, not the same. <laughs> like, it was so funny. You and, should all go watch that. And she's like now found on the roof of like a Red Lobster yeah. or something and like that. Like, there was a Red Lobster parking lot, I think. But I don't want to ruin it. she was like it. pantsless. I, I just, yeah. It was You it should was all great. go watch. It's hilarious. It's very funny. Kate McKinnon is everything. I just, I think it would cause a mass panic. That, like, it's now official 
documented knowledge if like the entire world like all the world yeah. powers are saying at the same that's time that's true it would i think it would cause a minor panic but it would also just be the kind of thing that like i don't i think it would be really exciting just to have like concrete evidence in our lifetime that you know something that people have wanted answered you know was like to have like to be able to say that, like, you know, you were alive when they were like, no, no, aliens are real. But, like, I also think, like, and I think this is when, like, the question of, like, theology comes into play. Because it's like, what if this changes the concept of, like, afterlives, too? But why would it? I, like... Because we don't, were we these don't other... die and become an alien. <laughs> no. But, like, what if these other planets and, you know, like, gotcha. galaxies, like, whatever... Like, go? Is it the same place? That's fair. I mean, I think if you take the... Um, whatchamacallit, the stance that if, you, if you're if you religious, I'm not personally very religious, so um, if you were to say like, oh, well, you know, clearly if we were made by God, then they have to be made by God, then I guess theoretically that would be, well, imagine if you died, you went to heaven and you're like, uh, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> what section is that? That's not Disneyland. Yeah, what no, is that? Like, who, are the, who are they? I think like you know? that would cause a big, at least a stir within yeah, that's the, fair. the religious communities. I guess, I guess that would cause some debate and questions. Especially because like, we're always talked about as like God's creation. Exactly. The, the world was created for us. I guess that In God's sense. image. And then oh, it's that's like... that's true. That's true. What, what about these guys and their little green out... Like, mm. big heads and that's stuff That's true. Like. I didn't think about it from that way. Now it's more way more complex. Look at you. I, I think it would be a giant, giant issue. And then that would completely like mess with people's core thinking about yeah. the reality. And even there were non-religious folks, like I'm I'm not very religious at all, yeah. but to note that like, okay, if there's another group out there that we are aware of, how much aware are we to them? Are we a lesser species? Are we great? Like That's fair. And then like, what does that mean for our future? Um, will they be coming to earth? Will- My thing is this, and the main reason why I've never really been scared of aliens is because the concept is that if aliens are real and they've been here already, they're not aggressive. We're probably not that special. Well, it's not even just about being not that special. They're clearly not aggressive in any way because if they want it, they're technologically more advanced than us. They're, um, you know, like they, they make contact potentially with us in certain ways, but like they don't bother us. They haven't tried to like blow us up or anything or like mine our planet for minerals. So it's, or like resources for minerals. Um, <laughs> they just like the minerals. <laughs> yeah, it's right. It's just all about the minerals guys. Um, but um, like, so it's like in my mind, there's not like a lot to be afraid of, I guess. I get that. I don't, I don't know. And that's the thing is I just, I don't know. And I'm one of those people who does not do well with the, I don't knows. That's fair. I, I can sit in it. It just like it. I don't know. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And you're like, and, but, I don't know. But you're, you're cool with that. Yeah, For because me, I'm a it gives dumb me person, great Kenneth. anxiety. There's a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> At some point when you're dumb, you have to just kind of be like, I don't know. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> Are we playing Fall Guys later? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's my life. I'm just, um, I don't, it, the, and I just think, like I said earlier, I, if there was ever like a war of the worlds version of alien attack oh fuck that i would not survive i would die because i'm too lazy to run like i'm like where are we gonna go and i'm not a good hider i'm not a good hider i've i i'm not like i would be in the basement crying that's my favorite thing anybody's ever said i'm not a good hider i'm not i always lost hide and seek i'm terrible i'm just in the middle of the lawn you're just in the middle of the lawn checking my genitals I, I would like I'm thinking this at one scene in like the Tom Cruise War of the Worlds where they're yeah. like in this basement and I'm like oh they'd be upstairs they would hear me because I'd be sobbing because I'd see a spider and I'd get scared <laughs> would you okay but I feel like this is to me it's like I feel like we say that but then like in an actual situation where it's like life or death you think my adrenaline would kick in enough? I think that A, your adrenaline would kick... Because I always, I always like to think that I'm the type of person, like, in a scary situation that I would lose my cool. I really don't. I actually really am good with my composure. Okay. Um, I think I think you're similar. I think you would stay composed. I Actually, I think you'd become more composed. Because it's such a, like, surreal moment. And, like, your brain does switch into survival mode. And, like, how do we remediate well, this? Thank you. But... I don't know <laughs> if I would respond that way for aliens. I think for zombies, I would. Oh, zombies, I'm dead. I can't with zombies. And that will certainly be 
another episode because oh, I am still they creeped. Creep I am creeped out. out by zombies, especially the smart ones that run. I can't handle it. Well, we can't run very well. No, <laughs> listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a great meal for a zombie. <laughs> Not the brains aspect. If they eat the rest of you, they've got. I'm thinking like the Walking Dead. I'm like a Thanksgiving feast for them. And get the potatoes. The (laughs) potatoes. Where did the potatoes come from? I'm always thinking my favorite part of Thanksgiving is mashed potatoes. I was was like, like, zombies don't eat potatoes. What are you talking about? Oh, I think I think we've had it. What time is it now? We're about an hour and a half in. Oh yeah, we're we're getting close to our bedtime, everybody. Um, I hope this was. This was, was scary. scary. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, I think it was funny, but it also it was it was. We talked about. I think we talked about things. This creeps me out. I'm I'm creeped out. Like I could feel it really? in my in like my stomach, where I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh no, you don't want to look at the window tonight. Yeah, don't look. At and the if window. I get up between alien. three and four o'clock this morning because I have to pee, you're gonna get a text. Just look only at the door. Yeah, but then sometimes, what if they're inside? Like, like the fourth. Oh, kind. have you ever seen that movie? Oh, what was that movie with um, Carrie Russell? Yes. Uh, Wait, was it Carrie Russell or was it the yeah, other it was one? Carrie Russell. Is that when we're like they're inside, like they're down the hallway and they're getting yeah, her and, like, son. Yeah, like every night, like the alarm goes off and yeah, they think it's the yeah. one son. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that movie. That's ter- I think it's me. on Netflix now. Is it? It's like it's like Dark Skies. Dark or Skies. Like that. That is oh my god, that movie scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I home like, Invasion to that. a whole nother level. Yeah, which is another episode we should do because Home Invasion scares the bejesus out of me. Yeah, I have like creeps me out. Four swords near our front door. I'm ready that, to go. How is that ready to go? If, you, if a home invasion happens, you're upstairs, and you just left four swords out for the guys. Oh, they don't know. Uh, I yeah, I have nothing up here. Maybe a bat. <laughs> Maybe a bat. <laughs> you've got you've got Acheron, Humphrey, and Potato. Okay, my you three dogs. Okay, you would I know. I would know. Potato was loud. Yeah, but would I be prepared up here? Not nearly as much as I would be downstairs. That's true. I do have my um, archery equipment in my closet. Okay. <laughs> well now they know now they're not going to come in they know where to go they go straight to the closet to get the bow and arrow they like have to Skyrim. build it oh I yeah and they also know the swords are downstairs okay don't come to me <laughs> <laughs> all those little green men out there yeah go to Rob <laughs> yeah come my way I would I would love to go to the police station completely wasted being like I shot at a bunch of little <laughs> oh my aliens. god but if you killed owls I would feel terrible so we sad. have an owl in my backyard is it an alien? No, but it was actually, it was really funny. I forget what I was watching. And then I went outside to walk Frolf at like 3 a.m., which is my dog, by the way. Which I'm, I think you could probably infer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my little brother. Um, <laughs> and, um, and all of a sudden, I just heard like, whoo, whoo, and I never, Aww. ever, ever see owls at all. And this one was very vocal. It was really cool. Oh, it's adorable. I yeah. love owls. Yeah, I do too. Sorry. But now I'm like. Going. Except with... for when I'm on a staircase. Then I have a problem with them. But I'm. Now, from hearing all these stories tonight, I had no idea that owls were included in these various. Me either. Apparently, it's like a, apparently it's a very big go-to for the police to be like, "But was there an owl involved?" I think we need to see this checklist or make our own. Right. I. It, it makes sense for how I imagine most cops to be. All right. <laughs> was there a weather balloon? <laughs> Did you see a balloon? No, no balloon. No okay. Balloon. Now hear me out. Was it an owl? <laughs> 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 not, not like, sir, you've been drinking tonight. Sir, that's not possible. It just, okay, well, hold on. We've got a couple more. <laughs> Are there any large ant nests in the area? <laughs> like, just like whatever nonsense that they can come up with. <laughs> Researchers um, believe. There's a blimp festival yeah, currently <laughs> going on. <laughs> if you live near deciduous pines, they do look like aliens. Um, yeah. I, I think I just pulled that out of my ass. I don't even know that's a real tree. The deciduous pine. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That Look at you. I, am. I don't know if that's a thing. I, I don't know. Well, I'm right. officially yeah. creeped out. Yeah, I'm creeped so out and exhausted. <laughs> I think we'll call this our yeah, first episode. This is the first episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, we have more creepy things to yeah, come. We, have, we talked about a bunch of them. <laughs> but we will get episode. more in depth in the future. We'll we'll be covering some of our yeah, favorites if you liked and also if you liked some of the stuff and wanted to learn more about it in this episode we could always dedicate more to like barney and betty and his genitals i i and really hope to not return to the aliens for some time no really you you don't, can, we'll just do an episode on barney's genitals we'll be fine that sounds the pretty scary episode. too <laughs> <laughs> sorry this is a joke that will never die with me <laughs> um 
but yeah f- um until next time thanks for tuning in yeah and, and um goodbye. i hope you are not too creeped out <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sorry if, um, i'm not sorry you knew what you were clicking on so that's uh, thank you and goodbye i don't know what to say it's our first episode we don't have a sign out yeah <laughs> so long <laughs> <laughs> so long <laughs> 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 <laughs>